Hello and welcome back to the 11th lesson in this chapter. So what we learn in this lesson is what is interference of sound waves or maybe more generically interference of longitudinal waves. Well, before we dive into this, I'd like you to press the subscribe button so that you continue to get notifications on all new videos from me. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and also share it with someone who can benefit from it. Well, sound waves can also undergo interference quite the way transverse waves interfere. And we can write equations for the interference very much like we derive for transverse waves. So let us say there are two sound waves that have same amplitude and wavelength, but, but a phase difference of phi and they travel in the positive direction of x-axis. Then we can write the equations for two waves, maybe like this, your equation one could be, say, S1 xt equals to amplitude A max times cos of kx minus omega t. And let us say the equation of second wave is S2 xt is equal to A max cos of kx minus omega t plus phi so that the two are phi radians out of phase. And if you add the two waves, then what you get is a new wave. And let's call that new wave as S dash is equal to S1 plus S2. And if you add the two equations, what you'll get is S dash is equal to, and you'll need to do a bit of trigonometric jugglery, which I've not shown over here. But if you do so, what you'll get is 2a max cos of phi by 2 times cos of kx minus omega t plus phi by 2. Well, we can see that we get another traveling wave and its amplitude is s dash max or let's call that a dash max is equal to 2am cos of phi by 2. And you can see that like transverse waves, the value of phi determines the type of interference that will happen. That is whether it is fully destructive so that the amplitude becomes zero or fully constructive such that the amplitude doubles or maybe the interference could be somewhere in between, not fully destructive, not fully constructive, depending on the value of phi. So to understand what kind of interference is possible under various situations, what we will do is vary the value of phi and while we can vary it in this equation by simply changing its value to uh, whatever we desire that is pi to pi or whatever the question is how can we vary it in a physical real setup well phi can be controlled or changed by changing the length of the path along which the two waves travel so let me explain this so let us say we have two sources of sound s1 and s2 and when the wave starts from here the phase difference is say zero or we can say that the sources are in phase this therefore means that the waves coming out of s1 and s2 have the same displacement because this quantity will become zero making s1 equal to s2 we will now seek to understand what happens to the two waves when they reach point P. And before we go ahead, the assumption here is that the distance to P is much more than the separation between the two sources. This helps us to assume that the waves are traveling in the same direction towards P. Well, if these two waves had traveled the same distance to reach point P like this, they would be in phase when they reach here. This implies that much like the transverse waves, they would combine to give fully constructive interference at P. But if you change the paths of these two waves such that the length L2 covered by sound from source S2 is longer than L1, the waves when they reach point P may not be in phase. And in fact, the mathematical correlation is that the phase difference of the resulting wave would be proportional to the difference in the length of the two paths. So, so we can write that L2 minus L1 is proportional to phi. 
So we take L2 minus L1, or rather its absolute value as equal to delta L. And what we are saying is that this delta L is actually proportional to phi. And how do we relate phi to this delta L? Well, we know the proportionality, but how do we exactly relate it? Well, it's quite simple. We know that a phase difference of 2 pi corresponds to a wavelength of lambda. Then a phase difference of phi would correspond to a length of lambda upon 2 pi times phi and this should equal to delta L. Or we can say that phi is equal to delta L upon lambda times 2 pi. So we can see in this equation that Fully constructive interference happens when phi is equal to 0, 2 pi, 4 pi or any integer multiple of 2 pi because that's when this value will be a plus 1 or a minus 1 so that you get maximum amplitude of 2a, 2am rather and therefore constructive interference. So for fully constructive interference, phi should equal m into 2 pi where m is an integer uh, which could be 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So we can say if phi is equal to m times 2 pi, we can very well say that delta L upon lambda times 2 pi should be equal to a multiple of 2 pi or an integer multiple of 2 pi. Well, you can see that delta L should therefore equal to m times lambda and this is actually the condition for fully constructive interference. So if we take m is equal to 0, we get delta L is equal to 0 which is the situation we considered earlier that both paths have same length. Then if you take m is equal to 1, you get delta L is equal to lambda which means that if delta L is equal to lambda, you get constructive interference at P. Again, at m is equal to 2, you get delta L is equal to 2 lambda or 2 times lambda or 2 times wavelength. And for this difference between L1 and L2, you again get constructive interference at P. So you can keep taking m values as 3, 4, 5, etc. and so on and find delta L value for constructive interference. And essentially the interference is fully constructive because the wave from S2 is you can say phase shifted relative to the wave from S1 at point P by 0 lambda, 1 lambda, 2 lambda and so on. And this puts both waves in phase at point P giving fully constructive interference. Well, you can also see that fully destructive interference will happen when phi is an odd multiple of pi or we can say that this will happen when phi is equal to 2m plus 1 pi because at these phi values this value becomes 0 giving a 0 amplitude which means destructive interference. So we can say that for fully destructive interference phi or rather delta L upon lambda times 2 pi should equal to 2m plus 1 times pi. And if you simplify this, you can see pi is cancelling off and if you bring 2 down here, what you'll find is delta L should equal to m plus half times lambda where m is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. And, and this is true for both the cases. Here also m is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and any integer. So if m is equal to 0, the path difference or delta L is equal to 0 0.5 lambda. And if m is equal to 1, delta L is equal to 1.5 lambda and so on. So for all such values of delta L, you get destructive interference at P. And I would like to emphasize here that all observations are happening at point P where the waves are meeting. And we say that a phase shifting of 0 0.5 lambda or 1.5 lambda or 2.5 lambda results in 
combining the two waves at P to give completely destructive interference. Well, any other value of L2 minus L1 would produce intermediate interference. For some delta L value, it will be closer to constructive and for others, closer to destructive. Well, you might say that this all looks very theoretical, but the fact is that interference effects are used in several real life situations. Uh, one of them is noise cancelling headphones with which you might be familiar. Now, these devices, what they do is they create zero noise or total silence when you put them on your ear. Now, what happens is that these devices first pick up the input noise that needs to be neutralized then they generate a copy of the noise that is the incoming noise which essentially means that they create a similar sound wave with the same frequency and amplitude of the incoming wave but this sound wave that the headphone creates is by radiance out of phase with the incoming noise so that the amplitude becomes zero and therefore cancels the incoming noise resulting in total silence so if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos